you, Jonathan. Pleasure. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Royal Reichmann, Boas Gador, to invite me already for uh, the fourth uh, time. There have been hundreds, thousands of uh, public conferences and closed-door meetings on terrorism and counterterrorism since 9-11. They usually end up with uh, recommendations, and then everybody goes home after the group photo has been taken. What happened to all those recommendations? Who has acted upon them and actually implemented them? Were they effective? Has anybody evaluating them? Governments have now spe been spending trillions of dollars on combating terrorism, and while there have been some tactical successes, like reducing suicide terrorism here in Israel, there has been no strategic uh, breakthrough. Why? Uh, in order to find more promising avenues forward, we have to look back what went wrong. And I think uh, there are at least five things that went wrong. And in the 14 minutes I have, I will rush through them. One of them is uh, the definition uh, problem. The problem is there have been uh, country definitions. The United States alone has uh, 20 regional definitions, but there has been no UN definitions because some people think freedom fighters cannot be terrorists. Others think jihadists cannot be terrorists. Others think that those that fight against occupation can and not uh, be terrorists. Well, terrorism is about means, and the goals can be holy and just but unjust means and unholy means uh, don't uh, make it any better. I have been following for a number of years the deliberations of the ad hoc committee and uh, it hasn't really gotten uh, further since uh, it was put on the agenda in the year 2000. This is the draft definition and you will see the underlined any, any, any it means that it is an impossible broad uh, definition. And if you define terrorism broadly, it simply means that there are more terrorists you have to find. In that sense, the response problem and the definition problem are related. If you all could agree on a narrow definition, then we could put terrorism in the same basket as we put piracy, slavery, genocide, and torture, something that everybody is against. But we have not. Uh, so where should we, uh, how should we proceed? Uh, this morning, Boas Ganoa's definition was read. It was a bit longer than the one he formulated in 1998, where he said that it's the intentional use of or threat to use violence against civilians or against civilian targets in order to uh, attain political change. I could uh, live with that definition. However, I would uh, say that terrorism can also serve to maintain a status quo rather than to bring about political change. The second problem is uh, in denying the tacit complicity of the mass media. Uh, Brigitte Nakos, a uh, journalist ter turned terrorism researcher, said terrorists and journalists are not in a love affair, but it's a strange bedfellowship in a marriage of convenience. There is a difference between the violence that happens anyway in the world and violence that just happens in order to enter the new system for free. Many, many years ago, through 356 before Christ, one of the seven wonders of the world, the Artemis Temple, was burned down. And when they caught the guy and asked him why he did it, he said he wanted to immortalize his name. The people of Ephesus were shocked about uh, this communicative function of terrorism and decided to boycott his name. But there was a guy called Theopompus who leaked it to Herodotus he was probably the first journalist, so we know. And I have in my book, Violence as Communication in Search of Terrorism in the Western News Media, shown that many uh, contagion acts come from terrorism. And more recently, a Professor Michael Yetter from the University of Western Australia in Perth found, uh, looking at 60,000 incidents, 
that media attention devoted to a terrorist attack was predictive of both the likelihood of another strike in the affected country within seven days' time and of a reduced interval until the next time. This finding is not new, but it has not been uh, digested. We still have news values that, well, I mean, that's how the terrorists see it. Um, in the 1860s, uh, uh, dynamite was invented. In the 1870s, 80s, uh, the rotary press, so the two came together. And ever since then, what Johannes Moss said, the propaganda function became more and more important. If you look at our news value, you see that at least the first three immediately play into the hands of the terrorists. Uh, they create negative news and get free uh, news coverage. Well, what can we do about it? There's censorship by governments, which is bad, because uh, then the watchdog functions, watchdog functions of uh, the journalists uh, are curtailed in other areas. There's self-censorship by the media, and then there is the creation of powerful counter-narratives. Each of these uh, has certain advantages and disadvantages, but uh, as has been stressed by other speakers this morning, we basically have lost so far the fight for the 500 million strong Muslim youth market where uh, the Twitter and YouTube and other social media have helped uh, the terrorists uh, to get uh, at them and radicalize them. And these infrastructures, which uh, our societies, our technology provides them, allow them to function the way uh, they function. And we're still at a loss. So we have to work more on uh, these uh, issues. However, it's not only the media that uh, play into the hands of the terrorists. Uh, they, of course, uh, there's the occasional disturbing uh, killings of uh, journalists, but there are also politicians, uh, members of the armed forces, law enforcement, that play politics with uh, terrorism and counter-terrorism. And uh, I can't go uh, through all the examples uh, that I have, uh, but certainly uh, the Chechen issue, these uh, suspicious apartment building explosions in uh, Moscow in the fall of uh, 19... And 99 have put put into power, and he has been in power ever since. And only recently, the Greek uh, Minister of Defense said, "Well, if uh, Europe is not uh, giving us uh, the money at uh, our conditions, we will flood Europe with uh, refugees, and among these refugee streams, there will be uh, terrorists." The biggest taboo is religion. If you listen to UN speeches, uh, there are regular references that terrorism has no religion, has nothing to do uh, with uh, true religion or true Islam, but seven out of ten terrorist attacks are religiously motivated. And if you uh, listen to someone like uh, Abu Bakr, he said, and I quote, uh, O Muslims, Islam was never for a day the religion of peace. Islam is the religion of war. Muhammad was ordered to wage war until Allah is worshipped alone. He himself led to fight and took part in dozens of battles. He never for a day grew tired of war. If millions of Muslims uh, believe uh, that, and if you look at the opinion of polls on the followers in uh, Arab and Muslim countries. Okay, they are only in the less than 10% uh, bracket, but that is still millions of people. Strange enough, experts uh, tend to disagree on the relationship between uh, religion and war, between uh, religion and terrorism. The next thing, has already been addressed by Peter Neumann and others, the concept of radicalization. Peter once described it as that that goes on before the bomb goes off. It's a sort of black box where seemingly normal young kids enter and then they come out 
as a terrorists. I have uh, tried to reconceptualize terrorism, and I have been profiting from the thinking of Clark McCauley and Sofia Moskalenko. Terrorism is a process that happens not only to them, it can, in a polarized situation, happen on both sides. And it doesn't have to uh, result in terrorism. Actually, uh, radicalization and radicalism, uh, radicalism is not the same historically. If you look at the history of ideas as extremism and radicalization, radicalism is historically linked to the Enlightenment, to democratization, anti-clericalism, anti-monarchism. So it is a progressive open movement historically while extremism is closed minds, doesn't listen to other factors. So I try to reconceptualize uh, radicalization in that way. And I'm pleased to see that my article, uh, my paper on radicalism, uh, counter-radicalism and de-radicalization is downloaded very, very often from uh, the internet. So these are the main factors that I see. I think we are now familiar, based on many case studies, uh, what the push factors are, at least in Western diasporas. We are familiar with the pull factors for young people, but the area where we have to look further and where we have to verify these uh, views is to look at the resilience factors in uh, our societies. Some of them are negative, some of them are positive, but Europe certainly faces now with this influx of hundreds and thousands of refugees a major challenge, and we really have to get this right to uh, integrate these people. Going through these five factors doesn't exhaust the field of where our shortcomings are in our approaches to counterterrorism, but uh, we have to evaluate what we have done so far, otherwise we will build on sand again. So you cannot do without rigorous research, and I'm glad that I'm here at a center where uh, research is valued uh, greatly, and I hope uh, to uh, move forward with other researchers in this field. Thank you for your attention.